Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. Hey, you're, you're talking. You should be standing right here. No. Stand I, right here. I, but this is my spot. Okay. It's episode 606. We got lots of good stuff. Yes. We are going to be unboxing today. My first unboxing. I'm excited about this. What? It's a uh, Kintax, an Android TV box. Nice. Yep. And as well, you're going to be walking us through a GIMP, the GNU image manipulation system, and uh, dealing with these, uh, the different screen, or, um, Portions of the screen that you can have. The windows. windows. There we go. It happens. Anyway, uh, yeah, all the time. Accidentally close the wrong thing. And, and what do I do? It. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Stick around. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players. For your local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. It's so great to have you here. Nice to see you too. Yes. Yay. It's like the whole clan is together again. I know. Yeah. How you Random been? Random intervals. Good. Good. Busy. Not enjoying yeah. the snow. <laughs> the snow. Isn't yes. this sad? Yeah. It snowed twice this weekend. Happy Canada. Uh, yeah. Happy this is Canada. Happy, happy Canada. This is this is Canada. And now we're rain and yeah, it's been cold. It was worse like four years ago. It was like shovel worthy this week. Ah, uh, yes. Was it? This is not so bad. This is slush and To all of our viewers in sunny California, in Florida, on the West Coast, it's nice to have you here. You can't relate to anything that we're talking about right now. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> we'll send you our sunscreen. We don't need it. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, I had quite an adventure leading up to the show. And as you know, we've been having some technical difficulties with our broadcast server. And yes. it's like, when it rains, it pours. And I feel like it's like, oh my, like what is going on? So I hooked up my laptop and was getting everything set up and ready to go. My laptop will not boot. So I pulled the battery held in the power button, waited, to, you know, because sometimes that can happen on a laptop. Tried again, still won't boot. Pulled out the hard drive, plugged in a new hard drive, still won't boot, and it won't even post. So uh, I think it's like, and I don't know what has happened. <laughs> it would have helped if you didn't spill coffee on it. I didn't do that either, Jeff. <laughs> I am so careful with my I electronics. I did not touch the laptop. I would never let her near any of my electronics. That's why she brings her own laptop. <laughs> That's right. And, and you, this is why when you see her moving forward, I'm like this. Yeah. I yeah. didn't touch it, I promise you. <laughs> I know I know my role. <laughs> <laughs> you know your weaknesses. That's right. So it's like it's like it just kind of feels like it's like sometimes it's one thing after another and and I guess because we do category 5 and we do it on a shoestring budget in a lot of ways and, and we do it for free we offer it for free and it's supported by our patrons and contributors people who donate people who use our shopping links uh, on our website category5.tv slash partners great way to support us yep. um, but those funds help us to be able to pay the rent every month pay for the insurance the internet um, do things like um, I'm putting money toward these uh, wireless headphone uh, microphones yeah um, so that kind of stuff um, you know helps it's going to help with that kind of stuff. Uh, but then something like a laptop no longer works, and it's like, that's my production laptop. So, all that said, if you have means to contribute, please do. I hate to ask for money, and that's part of why Category 5 is, is free. I think that's, that's part of it. Uh, but we're very, very fortunate. This week, interestingly enough, Sasha, you and I last week built a Raspberry Pi touchscreen from KKSB. Right. Okay. Th this is actually a Raspberry Pi. So instead of my laptop this week, I've got a Raspberry Pi that we're going to be doing the demo. So like last minute, I'm pulling everything together and we're doing it this, on a Raspberry Pi. So this was fantastically timely. Like if it went in the opposite direction. Oh yeah. If it right? had died last week, we would have we been, like, been in real do? trouble. Like so at least I had this. <laughs> at least we have that. So I don't have a mouse. I have a touch screen and I have the wireless keyboard that we used last week. So that's kind of cool. It's not a replacement for the laptop. The laptop was powerful enough that I do a lot of video editing and things like that. But at least it means we can do the demo today. And oh, you awesome. can know that this is actually a Raspberry Pi that I'm going to be using t during tonight's demonstration. 
So if all goes awesome. well, it kind of speaks for yeah. how awesome single board computing has become. Does that just give a bonus marks in the giggle score? It does nothing to the giggle <laughs> score, but it definitely gives us a, a, a smile in our hearts to know that a Raspberry Pi is powering tonight's show. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? That is awesome. awesome. Jeff, you've got a, a cool device that you're going to be unboxing in yes. just a couple of moments' time. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, it's my first time unboxing. Yes. Yeah. Look at how we're get everybody's involved now. We're doing yeah, new it was, things. It's uh, not going to lie. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh yeah. Because this is like a throwback to when you were sick and <laughs> I had to run the show. Oh yes. And and that was like painfully scary. Why am I even... I'm going to go sit down, actually. No, no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> now that Six, you mention it, I, I, I think I just heard Jeff can the cover the show. Of the show. I yeah. think that was 50-50. Well, yeah, you did a lot of the talking and a lot of the, you know, visual, but, uh, you know, I had to run the computer and I was afraid of blowing it up. So, you know, we'll see how the unboxing goes. <laughs> if I can't get the box open, we'll just blame it on... Um, the not having a laptop. An unboxing where he can't. <laughs> I'll tell you. The, uh, okay, I'll tell you about open. the magic of television. No matter what, it's going to go flawless. Because even if it goes bad 14 times. <laughs> no matter what, all of a sudden there's like a cut point and it's Robbie's hands <laughs> opening the box. Hi, well, Sasha. You have hairy hands today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, it's going to be good. We're uh, going to be view reviewing the Quintex Android box. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, before so we do get into it, though, Jeff, I want to remind everyone get onto our YouTube and make sure you click on that subscribe button and if you want to get notifications it's important to click that bell and that's going to tell you Jeff you saw it before the show that's right we're live we're live it tells you whenever we post a really cool video that's right this is how we're going to make our millions of dollars oh, everybody press subscribe she's got a plan everybody do it this if is going to get yeah. all it takes is 10 billion people <laughs> It's fine. We hmm. can do this. <laughs> <laughs> we all Have sign up for a thousand accounts. Exactly. <laughs> there you Have go. Have a lot of children. Get them accounts <laughs> and then hit. Yeah. We've got it all worked out. <laughs> That's right. We've got it all worked out. All right, Jeff. We'll uh, we'll get you to head on over there. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so, what do you got? We, we've got a an Android. TV box from Kintex, and we've looked at their devices before, uh, but this one is an actual like. TV box. Tell us about it. Yeah. So uh, first off, you can uh, find out more on their website at, at kintexworld.com. Uh, so as well, you can check it out at cat5.tv slash Android. So this is the box. Very nice box. I love the design. Ooh. Um, now, the one thing I, I will say about this box is it's, it is solid <laughs> and, and it's, it's like it's airtight. It's so fitting. Like I am. I'm oh, he's doing it. Pulling. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, it's so good. It's you Nicely doing that, that this th week. This is like a solid, robust box. Oh, so see? just from an unboxing standpoint, I, I, I like this. I'm so, so glad he got into the box. <laughs> the box is <laughs> noteworthy in itself. Right. <laughs> Unboxings are just not the same when you can't get into the box. <laughs> right. <laughs> then it's just a boxing? I don't know. So <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my kind of manual. Uh, I know you guys don't read them, but uh, I do. And so it's very easily fold out and readable. So, you know, Kay. simple. Uh, very clean, nice uh, design on what, what it comes in. Um, and I like the way it's wrapped up. So there we go. Very sleek and small. Chat room is making a note that uh, you forgot to read the instructions, Jeff. So well, how are you ever going to know how to... Because I'm not turning it on right now. <laughs> oh, I'm just okay. We're going to do that later. <laughs> so, so there you go. That is, very that nice. is the box. Very nice. It's got that... Um, like that etched look to it. I, I like is it the light that. You see that. Jeff, what's the material? Because it has like a brushed steel it, look to it. Uh, it it feels metallic in some way. I possibly, but I, it, I think it's plastic. Truthfully, wow. I do think it's it is. Got a, plastic a nice case. look to it's it. It's very lightweight. Like this is this is very very lightweight. It's quite nice. Cool. Uh, so the the Quintex. This is a Q9s Pro Android TV box, and it's uh, powered by. The new Amlogic S95 uh, X2 system on chip, chip quad core ARM Cortex A53 processor, uh, and it's up to 1.8 uh, gigahertz. So, a lot of power in a little box. So, as you can see, uh, it has LAN plug in, it's got optical audio. Really? Get a little bit closer so you can see Now, that. you're moving real fast, but as soon as you said LAN, I perked up because usually you got to do Wi Fi with these things. That's right. Yeah, no, this, this has LAN on it, which is, much which is nicer. quite nice. Um, but it, 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 so it will do, it's fast, well, because it's dual band, uh, 802.1 uh, gigabit. Uh, 
uh, B, G, and N Wi-Fi as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has Bluetooth 4.1. Okay. So lots of ways to connect to it. You've got the optical audio, which is quite nice. Uh, you know, especially if you're, you know, watching a lot of, uh, you know, good movies. You kind of want that optical audio. I know I love using my optical audio on, at home. Uh, HD uh, output 2.0, which is kind of nice. A nice little toggle button for power. And that's actually 4K, Jeff. Yes, not, not HD. That's right. Yeah. HDMI. So it, is, it is 4K. Um, so it's H HDMI 2.1 output. It's up to 4K at 60 hertz with uh, SEC, HDP, and HDR support. Uh, really? Okay. Five volts. And so, yeah, nice little box. We'll see what else comes in here. Oh, comes with your HDMI cable. Very cool. nice, very nice. And your power supply. Oh, look at that. It's got a remote. Oh. Ooh. Swell. Nice. Very nice. Nice tactile buttons. Uh, you got your volume control. Very easy to see. It is not a light up remote, to be very, very clear. So we'll pull that out of the box. Let's see, what do we got for batteries? Oh my gosh. That's that is a solid <laughs> solid. Alright. So two AAA batteries to power that uh, remote. Very, very nice remote. Not included in the box, I presume? No, there is. No, that's, that's it. That's Nothing it. in the box. All right. So that is, that is the, uh, the device. And so it's got Android TV 8.1.0 uh, kernel version 4.9.76. Uh, as well, the GPU is a Mali G31 MP2, which is quite nice. And it's got 4 gig RAM DDR4. And you can get two different um, flash sizes on this one. So you've got the 32 gig and the 64 gig. Um, uh, e e e EMMC flash with a micro SD slot. Uh, it's up to 32 gigs. Oh, so you can expand it as well? So that's, uh, yep. So you got that on the side. Oh, so and I see USB. USB so can I plug in like hard drives and you things like that? You can plug in hard drives as well. Yep. Okay. Um, so some of the code. Uh, uh, sorry, I want to point out earphones. Mm. Really? Most do not have an earphone port. There we go. Can mm. you see that? Cool. Even um, even I iPhones don't have. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so what I like about that is if maybe you've got this device, say, in your bedroom or something, uh, you know, you could plug oh, in your yeah. wireless uh, headphone yeah. jack, but it's got the Bluetooth oh, it's got as Bluetooth well. too, yeah. So, you know, that way you can listen in the quietness of your bed and not disturb your partner. Cool. Um, so as far as the codecs that are supported, you've got the VP9, uh, which profile two up to 4K, 60 frames a second. You've got the 10-bit H265 up to 4K, 60 frames a second. The AVS2 P2 up to 4K, 60 frames a second. It just goes on. H264 AVC up to 4K, now 30 frames a second on that one. Uh, H264 MVC up to 1080p uh, 60 and uh, MPEG-4 ASP up to 1080p 60 as well. That's uh, so much more. So lots of codecs that it will play, which is really, really good. Um, now, one of the things with this that uh, from a standpoint when it comes to like YouTube and stuff yeah. is there are some limitations as far as, you know, it is 4K, but you're not going to get your 4K uh, feed out of that because it, it is maxed out at the 1080p. So but, maybe uh, just the USB is going to give us 4K playback? Yeah. Is that the idea? So, but that's that's the device. It's very very lightweight. Uh, like, uh, this, cool. this is a solid design. I mean, and, and as a, as an Android TV user, uh, I'm excited about this. This is good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nice. Uh, Jeff, do you have a, an Android TV box at home that you use at yes. this point? You do? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I want to actually, let's uh, get you back around here. We're going to yeah. actually take a really quick break. And Jeff, w uh, we're going to hook this up and we're going to take a look at this, see what it looks like out of the box. Um, Jeff being experienced with Android TV, um, this is a great opportunity for us to see how this device performs. Mm -hmm. And I should mention, this is a very affordable device. So you mentioned there's two different models available. Yes. Um, and both of them are under 50 bucks. Oh, beautiful. So with the build quality and everything else uh let's fire it up and see if it's that. really uh, if it's worth it that's yeah crazy. oh yeah that's definitely plastic that's but crazy. it's got a Absolutely. like a brush steel look to it oh yeah cool i want one we're gonna be right back stick around
For a limited time, get your hands on limited edition shirts from the Category 5 TV network. These high-quality shirts are manufactured by Teespring, a fundraising website, and your purchase will help support the shows we produce. Get yours today and send us your pictures to be featured on the corresponding show. Visit cat5.tv slash shirts to support us and get your official network shirt today. cat5.tv slash shirts. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Jeff, we've got it all hooked up. Yes. I don't even hook up. Yeah, I don't even know that you can't even see it on the set here, but what we've done, I'm just going to jump right in here because we've just had to put it right here because that's where kind of our power is here. So I have plugged in Ethernet, I've plugged in HDMI output, and the power. And shall I just flip this on, Jeff, if you want to hit the uh, yep. laptop? Yeah. Okay. And it's on. And I'll just set it back down, and let's see what uh, what happens. Okay. Let me it up. I, wanna, I almost want to hear, Kintax. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things when it comes to Android boxes that I have found is you can have a very long boot time. Okay. Like my Android box at home, um, I forget the brand, but it's an A95, and okay. it takes me s 30 to 60 seconds to boot up. All right. Anyone so timing that? We're in. That was about 12 seconds. Was it? That's wow. pretty fast. Welcome that's to 2011. Time travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, so we're going to have to figure that out. So uh, it is an infrared-based uh, remote. All right. I'm going to switch back so, over here so that they can see. So it's not a matter of like yeah, yeah, yeah. pointing it that way and working. So you it's not FM. To, it's, well, yeah, yeah exactly. It's not a Roku. Um, so, but we did find some batteries that we threw in there. So let's just Perfect. see how this thing performs. Okay. Right back over there. Okay. So oh, look at the data's back. Oh, look at oh, that. Nice. Auto it's it's of the data. automatically fixed. Okay. So cool. from a responsiveness... Uh, instant based on the remote. Oddly enough, mine at home, there's a yep. very slight delay of probably really? half a second. Wow. Yeah. But this is this is pretty instant. So um does come with Google Play. Uh, oh, nice. I have no clue what that is. I don't even recognize that symbol. Well, what? Oh. Uh, don't know. Looks, looks like, like a, play, a like play icon. Yeah, it looks like a music oh. uh, type thing. But uh, So you can see up in the top corner there just above the browser, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, uh, icon, you've got the Ethernet icon, and it's green, telling you that you are connected to the Ethernet, which is nice. Okay. Bluetooth is off, USB connection is off, and battery, and or no, that's uh, EMC, SD card. Yeah, SD card, EMC. Okay. So let's take a look at the settings. Yeah, I'm keen to see like what kind of stuff we've got here. So we have the network. Uh, so your your basic Android menu, your yeah, yeah. screensaver, all that kind of stuff. Oh, now date and time. Can we set the time zone? Because yes. I noticed that it's. Automatic like GMT. Date and time. Use network, network provided time. time. Yeah, okay, so that's how it got the time. Okay, perfect. Now, but it, it, set date. it got the date. Oh, set time zone. Yeah, see, look at that. It's it's right GMT. That's right. So, so let's set it to Toronto time or New York. Eastern. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Um, so time at the top left, 7.25 p.m. Let's take it off the 24-hour format. Although it wasn't 24 on the top. Mm -hmm. It was showing 7.25 p.m. Was it? That's cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Still good. Um, let's back out. You got like a back button on there? Yeah, there's a back button on the remote. Nice. I like yeah, this. Yeah, look at that. Time's good. Sweet. Okay, so going back into the settings. You got language, um, keyboard, accessibility. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, you can add a Bluetooth accessory. Sweet. Oh, oh look at that. Is it going to find my watch? Okay. Uh, if okay, you're in so parent mode, interested I suppose. to see. Yeah. We have a Bluetooth keyboard right here. Okay. Can we, like, I, I want to know. Can you set it to, like, pairing mode? It's currently in pairing mode. Let's see if it okay. picks it up. All right. Okay, let's. Searching for accessories. Before pairing your Bluetooth device, make sure they're in pairing mode. Now, it you is sure connected it is? to my phone. Oh, so okay. Turn that keyboard may not be able to connect to multiple devices. Yeah, so I just turned it off on my device. Okay. Now connect. And. PC. Okay. Okay. It's now, flashing. So trying again. It's looking. Come on, buddy. Come on, pick it up. You can do it. This, this is, is a browser, so I'm very interested to see if it does connect, but I'm not. Your keyboard's not in pairing mode, Jeff. <laughs> it was in pairing mode a second ago. Okay, it's flashing. Okay, now it's in pairing mode again. Searching. This is the fun of, of doing a live thing, and, and oh, I've... It stopped again. It's not picking up. 
That's oh. your keyboard, though. It's not. We've yeah. never paired it with anything. No, that's right. Other than your phone. So. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. Let's see. Wanting to connect. Since you. Okay. So what do you do? One. Do that. Two. Press one. Three. Hold in. PC. Okay. Four. Oh, there. Now it's impairing. I had it not impairing because now you got the fast flash. Jeff okay. didn't read the instructions properly. It says right on it, Jeff. Well, you know what? Fair enough. I'll take that one on the chin. Don't be daft. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's not. So can you push back and then like go to search for accessories again? Yep. So add, add accessory. accessory. Yeah. Give this a try again. Okay. It is flashing. Oh. Oh, okay. look at that. All right. Keyboard. Okay. See if we yeah. can okay. See, Jeff, it helps if you actually put your keyboard in pairing mode. <laughs> Pair with keyboard. Okay, so punch in 275984. Sasha, okay. I'm going to let Sasha do that. Okay. 275984. Then press enter. And then press enter, it says. Okay. Oh, paired! paired. Paired. It's paired. Oh, well, wicked. Look at that. So now, can you actually, so I'm just, so looking at the keyboard with the navigation there, mm -hmm. can you up navigate and up and down? Oh, yeah. That's you. Sasha's got That's it. Me. That's me. sweet. I got control. See? Remote's down. Yeah. Remote's yeah, down. It's me. Set the I remote on this. the table, Jeff. Okay, what, Sasha. Where do you guys want to go? Show us. Uh, look at yeah, that. look at that. Okay. I, I so actually, my brain, my, my eyes don't work. I, I mean, <laughs> there's a screen right here. Oh. She's like looking at the screen four kilometers away. There's one right here. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I would be interested to know if we um, That's cool. connected a Bluetooth mouse. Oh, here we go. If that would make, like, if you would then get a mouse on the screen, I don't know. So, but anyway, right. so going back, now one of the things I'm interested okay. about is... Yeah. Security and restrictions. Yeah. So allow installation of unknown sources and then verify apps. Okay, so that's all it is for security. Cool. So now because this is an Android TV uh, device, I need to say this. You, especially if you're going to be using the browser, yeah. you need to have protection on your device. It is Android. Mm. So, you know, get ESET throw or something yeah. and throw it on your device. ESET has a free... Android TV oh, protection. Sweet. So you can actually, if you go into Google Play, you should be able to find that. So we don't need to do that, but if you yeah, do... you have to sign Oh, it. you got to sign it because yeah. we don't have like a, we don't have our, right. our Google account set up or anything like that yet. Games, what do we got for adding games? Oh, okay. So, you got so where are you app. now? Games? So I went to oh, games went? and then I... Okay. And then to add. But it gives me more than just that. So I mean, oh, okay. So this is like these are the apps that are currently installed, and you can add them. It's basically like a menu. Okay, so that's KDMC. What, that's nice. KDMC. So that's what multimedia. That was. Okay. Okay. So in the bottom of this screen, yeah. Uh, how when uh, that icon down we at the bottom. We were wondering there. what that icon was. That is KDMC. Click it. I want to see it. Cody very, requires very cool. access to your device media. Of course, we want it to have access to our media. Because if I plug in a USB flash drive that's full of movies and stuff, um, I want it to be able to access those. Now, that was version 18.0 Leia. I don't know what version's out right now. So you'd probably have... Sasha, do you want to look for... What version is KDMC right now? So oh, you may have to do an update see. depending on... But that, cool. like, that was nice and seamless. Yeah. So we're looking at everything out of the box. Is there any way... Wow, looks really good. Maybe we should pull up uh, YouTube or something like that yep. and see if it works, just so that we can actually click on some media. But navigation seems pretty, pretty sleek. What are you pushing right now? I was hitting the back oh, one, so it okay. went back out. So I actually have to turn code yeah. off. Yeah, it's typical. That's kind of how it works. It's uh, Sweet. power options exit. Okay, so All right, cool. Button. Okay, so let's go to YouTube. Yeah. I, Search I for like category how quickly five. Quickly, this loads. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to switch. Okay, I've, I've seen some... Uh, oh, now you're using the keyboard now. Oh, there's voice as well. What? Sweet. There's, there wasn't a microphone on this, is there? I don't think so. Is there? I don't know. You oh. pushed something. He's pushing buttons all over the place. It's... Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's... Google, Google isn't, isn't responding. responding. So we're going to close that up. Okay. All right, so we're going to go back up to... Search... Tap to speak. Okay, that's interesting. 
Are you actually clicking on this search by voice? No, but okay, hold on. Okay. What was that? It flicked was there that? again. Tap to speak. Oh. Test. I don't think there's a mic. Tap. Go to YouTube. You can plug one. Give us videos. Can we go to does category like, five? Does like a, I, I want. Oh, can you just type? Well, that's what I started before, but. Uh, oh, I think what you're doing is you're pushing. I'm just guessing. I'm taking the remote from him. Okay, now we have a cursor. What? What? Oh, you're controlling. Okay. See, Jeff, I can hack stuff. Okay, okay so type. Whoa. You have. Oops. Oh, okay. Well, you got you got the right place anyway. There you go. Okay, so let's okay. So can we? Can I go down now with the cursor? Yep. Sweet. So we got a live stream. stream. We're gonna totally live stream this. See how quick this uh, is gonna be crazy. Brilliant. I, you know, I, I gotta say, I wish I knew that we were unboxing an Android TV box tonight because <laughs> I, have a, I have a remote at home yeah. that's got a full keyboard on it, it's got a touchpad, uh, it's Bluetooth enabled that, that I use for my Android box. So I am not happy right now. Oh, error! Oh no! Error occurred. Okay, is that because it's live? Uh, maybe. Well, this has got USB and everything else too, Jeff, so I could plug in a, a keyboard or whatever else. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, can so let's let's just click on like videos. one of our videos instead of the live stream because I think that's gonna cause a rift in the space-time continuum. <laughs> Does this work? Did you? Wow, oh, it plays quick. it plays our ads. That's good. <laughs> wow. Oh, look, and it's got a skip ad down on the side there. Just like YouTube. Let's yep. go, go, Slowly go. Getting there. I think if I had a mouse plugged in, it'd be a little more pleasant to work with. But yes, I agree. But it works and it's playing. Look at that. Now, I'm, I'm hearing sound. Well, because my speaker is plugged in. Uh, my screen is plugged into HDMI. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, and so it has HDMI that. audio right. output. That's that cool. Sense. But, no, that's a, that's a very responsive device. Mm -hmm. For 50 bucks, yeah. well done. Under. Yeah. yeah. So check them out, cat5.tv slash Android. You can pick one of those up. All right, Sasha, we've got to head over to the newsroom. Awesome. You got some stories for us? Sure do. Excellent. All right, here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Ubuntu 14.04 LTS has reached the end of life five years after it was first released. Amazon's AI automatically tracks and fires warehouse workers who it determines to be unproductive. Nintendo's hybrid Switch console now stands at 34.74 million units, which surpasses the sales of the incredibly popular N64. And Elon Musk has revealed his Neuralink startup is close to announcing the first brain-machine interface to connect humans and computers. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Jeff Weston. Yaman. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Asha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. Ubuntu 14.04 LTS has reached its end of life five years after it was first released. When a piece of software reaches end of life, most commonly called EOL, this marks the end of all support. And as of this past Tuesday, there will be no further security updates, package updates, or maintenance updates to Ubuntu 14.04 LTS for desktop or server users. Since 2012, each long-term support release, or LTS, of Ubuntu is backed by five years of ongoing support, security patches, and critical fixes. The benefit of getting ongoing 
ongoing band the benefit of getting ongoing band-aids, bug solutions, and core packages is one of the reasons Ubuntu LTS releases are the preferred choice for millions of users. But even so, that support is finite. Although support for Ubuntu 14.04 ended April 30th, the OS itself will continue to work without any major issues. Third-party repositories can even continue to provide packages for the release, though, um, though very few will. Canonical advises that users of Ubuntu 14.04 LTS upgrade to an activity, actively supported version of Ubuntu as soon as possible. Cool. Well, I'm glad we don't have five-year support on our life. <laughs> <laughs> the upgrade path is really quite simple. So follow the directions yeah. um, that they provide, mm -hmm. and you can actually get to the next version of Ubuntu LTS quite simply. Just yeah. using because it, it's based on Debian. So like we're used to apt, apt get, and you can do all that through uh, in Ubuntu as well. Is there any reason why somebody would stick to 14.04? Like, I, I can't well, imagine Well, it's a server why. OS, right? Right. So, uh, I, well, I mean, it can be. It's, uh, they offer both a server and uh, desktop distros. Right. On a server, though, sometimes, like, you've got old software that depends on old dependencies, and maybe, you know, your company paid $20,000 to have that software developed, and right. do you want to redevelop it if, like, say, it, it uses OpenSSL 1 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Spend all the money you need to spend. Make it happen. Yeah. But that, that might hold you back. I mean, and, and, you know, I hate to say it, but government, uh, you see it a lot where, right. you know, they, they've invested so much money in software. And this is why we sometimes hear about data breaches that have to do with um, software in various facilities, not just government, but companies as well. Because they spend a lot of money to build the software, mm -hmm. and technology moves very, very fast. Oh, yeah. We have to budget as we're building that software for ongoing regular maintenance. Right. Like it's like a regular thing. So it's not just like buy it and forget it. No, you've got to pay whoever's developing it to continually keep that up to date. But if you don't, then yeah. you've got software that depends on this old operating system. And if you upgrade the operating system, you'll break that software. Right. Right. That's a big problem. Oh. It's catch-22. <laughs> it's like they all have to do this all at once. Like there needs to be a lot of communication and coordination and everybody just... Just never, just never stop evolving. <laughs> you just can't ever stop evolving. Right. If you, if you run websites, like people deploy WordPress websites and then don't have it actively maintained by somebody who understands how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you get compromised and you wonder why. <laughs> right. Maybe you know why, but, you know, it's, you got to spend the money to it's keep it funny, safe. It's funny, though, that people, you know, they look at their cars, and they're like, oh, I need to get my regular yeah. oil changes. I, mean, I need to it's rotate true, Jeff. my tires. Absolutely. I've got to put money into my car. But when it comes to their computers and their software, it's like, oh, I bought this five years ago. It still runs well. It's good. That's not the point. Yeah. yeah. And it's, that's a really interesting analogy because like I work in a computer shop and and I know like if I take my car somewhere and and it has something wrong with it something's clanking under the hood and they say it's going to cost x number of dollars I'm like oh okay yeah. you know like sometimes it hurts but it's got to be done yeah, yeah. or right. maybe you know maybe it's um, at the point where now okay maybe I got to uh, buy, something else. buy something else but you know that you're spending money at right. that point so but in computers you're right a lot of people will yeah, they say, it. oh, you know what? Nah, I'll just. They're or, running servers with blown caps. Yeah, some people, and, some people are a little bit allergic to updates. Like they're a yeah. little bit like software scared. Hardware well, too. Part of the yeah. problem is there's a mentality that comes with it where it's like, oh, there's a software update. Yeah, but there's bugs. Exactly. Don't update yet. This is going to slow people things go, down. Oh, I'm going to ignore or, this. And then they don't do the update. You're on Windows, right. aren't you? But the th yeah, the, the truth of the are, matter the is, issue. the truth of the matter is, some updates will brick your system, right? So no, that doesn't happen, Sasha. So it so it makes <laughs> sense that people be afraid. Michael, I hear you. So yeah. Yeah. last week we talked about how if you have a USB flash drive plugged into your computer and then the May update runs, yeah, it can break your system. And yeah, we have a viewer, Michael, who reported that it actually bricked his no. system. Yeah. So yeah. I can understand why people wouldn't oh. want to do updates. But the thing is, when there is no more support, you got to. Yep. You got to. Yeah. It's time. Keep on top of it. I mean, you absolutely have to. It's tough certainly tough and in business it costs a ton of money mm -hmm. it really can 
Amazon's AI automatically tracks and fires warehouse workers who it determines to be under unproductive. Amazon's fulfillment centers are the engine of the company. Massive warehouses where workers track, pack, sort, and shuffle each order before sending it on its way to the buyer's door. Critics say those fulfillment center worker, workers face strenuous conditions. Workers are pressed to make rate, with some packing hundreds of boxes per hour and losing their job if they don't move fast enough. Documents obtained by The Verge show those productivity firings are far more common than outsiders realize. In a signed letter last year, an attorney representing Amazon said the company fired hundreds of employees at a single facility between August of 2017 and September 2018 for failing to meet productivity quotas. A spokesperson for the company said that over the time, roughly 300 full-time associates were terminated for inefficiency. The number represents a substantial portion of the facility's workers. A spokesperson said the named fulfillment center in Baltimore includes about 2,500 full-time employees today. Assuming a steady rate, that would mean Amazon was firing more than 10% of its staff annually, solely for productivity reasons. The numbers are even more staggering in North America as a whole. Amazon operates more than 75 fulfillment centers with more than 125,000 full-time employees, suggesting thousands lose their job with the company annually for failing to move packages quickly enough. Documents also show a deeply automated tracking and termination process. Amazon's system tracks the rates of each individual associate's productivity, according to the letter, and automatically generates any warnings or terminations regarding quality or productivity without input from supervisors. Although Amazon says supervisors are able to override the process. Okay. Critics see the system as a machine that only sees numbers, not people. The system goes so far as to track time off task, which the company abbreviates as TOT. If workers breach from scanning packages for too long, the system automatically generates warnings and eventually the employee can be fired. Amazon says retraining is part of the process to get workers up to standards and that it only changes rates when more than 75% of workers at a facility are meeting goals. The bottom 5% of workers are placed on a training plan according to the company. An appeal system is also part of the termination process. Workers have at times pushed back against the company's productivity requirements. Last year, East African immigrant workers at a Minnesota factor facility organized protests against the company, saying they didn't have sufficient break time, including for prayer. In response, Amazon has continued to tout the benefits of working for the company, pointing to their hourly pay rates and policies like parental leave. But the documents make clear that some workers failing to meet productivity standards won't reap the benefits of a job at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Jeff, I feel like you are going to have a lot to say about this. Jeff, questions, comments, What are your concerns? views on this? Because I, I'm on the fence a little bit because I don't know all the details. I am also on the fence a little bit because I've... Okay. I've seen it both ways. I have worked in places where if I don't reach my goal or my quota, I'm reprimanded and I'm working really hard and somehow it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Then... I've also been in places where everybody seems to just be dragging their heels and not working nearly as hard as they could. That's the thing. That's right? my perspective. Uh, we, we live in a, a world right now where people feel like things are need to be handed to them on a silver platter. Right. Like, let's take personal days and let's let's use our vacation or our sick days as vacation days. And uh, um, the reason I'm on my phone is because this is totally reminding me of an episode of Doctor Who from season 12 where they f uh, had to visit a facility called Kerblam. <laughs> and it's like, it was so Amazon. And, and this is absolutely ringing true <laughs> with that episode where it's this massive warehouse and there are robots that are controlling people getting... Right. Okay. But, okay, <laughs> so here's the thing. Quite literally in Doctor Who, though. And <laughs> I will, like, completely let you talk at some point, Jeff. But when it is pure data that is terminating people, it's really not based on, I guess, emotion. But 
we right. understand from the, the news that the supervisor has the power to override and that the right. bottom 5% go through training processes to help them to better their productivity. Right. People should be placed in jobs they're good at. If you are not good at this job, then you can't just keep it. Like yeah. if, you, if mm -hmm. you're a bad boxer, sorry, but it's time to go. And it's the computer telling you, not me as your manager. So I feel a little bit better about that. It's really tough because I do understand the side of it where there's the, like the slave labor mentality. Well, right. I don't know that that's really the case, but I can, I can see how it's being spun that way and putting Amazon in that, in that light. But I think it's interesting that they can, that they, that technology can be used in order to monitor and report productivity because it, it is a real problem these days yeah you want do you, you want a know, chance I've, I've been good yeah been go good. ahead go ahead okay. jeff so, because uh, like i i completely disagree with this okay i i have no issue with a company setting performance standards i have no issue with a company setting targeted goals and all that kind of stuff sure what i have an issue with is the fact that it is a computer making the decision the the fact is we are all human beings. We all have different things that are built in. And so the problem with an AI generated system that terminates employees is that it doesn't have the built in uh, properties. Compassion? Well, not even <laughs> compassion. Because I mean, like, if you, if you remove all emotion from it and you look at it from, say, a legal standpoint, yeah. and you go, okay, so so and so has <laughs> uh, a documented disability in which they have an accommodation, and they have limitations and restrictions on what they can do, and they can only move so fast, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, but they're Hold not on, getting no, no, the just, job, Jeff. I was quiet. Mm hmm. So. So he's that, saying, Robbie, be quiet. Yeah, exactly. Okay, go uh, ahead. But all that stuff, you can't just plunk into a system and have the numbers work out because the fact is there's a people factor and you cannot have those decisions run by a computer. I can, I can 100% see and I have no issue with a company that goes based on our performance metrics, it appears you're not up to snuff. Mm -hmm. We would like to help you get there. You know, and they talked about training and stuff like that. Yeah. But the fact that the computer's like, eh, you suck, you're at the door. No, I, I completely disagree. Again, and, is that I, how it's being spun though? That is 100% what the news story said. I know, but... That is what I... It really, the comparison to the AI will just, terminate and the supervisor can, can override. override. That means yeah. the primary decision-making capabilities rest with a computer on whether humans are capable of keeping up with data for the system. And right. that's not right. Netflix when needs I to make worked, a documentary. I worked for a bank, and at the bank I worked, I had to sell credit cards and lines of credit yeah. and i sales job i am bad at it i am the worst salesperson you i would rather just buy things myself than sell them to anybody else that's just who i am i am bad at it and the computer every single month told me i did not meet my sales goal and they kept me at that job i think because i was friendly even though i didn't do a great job at mm. all for right. a long time, but I wasn't the best person for that job. If right. right, like I just wasn't. I wasn't a good match. I don't want you to have a visa. But he, <laughs> like, here's the thing. So we have not I mean, just visa. Performance <laughs> measurement is everywhere in the workforce. You go to a McDonald's drive-through, and they have that little clock that says this person's been waiting more than the, you know, typical <laughs> 30 seconds that it takes from. All right, that's it. Go sweep up the cigarette butts in the parking lot. Right, but could you imagine if suddenly McDonald's institutes a computer that says, sorry, teenage job worker making minimum wage, you missed 30-second window times by, uh, you know, 30 seconds on average over the last week. You couldn't flip the burgers fast enough. You're out the door. Like, I'm sorry. Life happens. Life happens. You cannot have a computer make the decision. What Can happens I if your Amazon package is really delayed? We, we have to move on, guys. Yeah. Okay. We have to move Sorry. on. Sorry. Um, I understand there's a human factor. We all go into work and we have lousy days. Once in a while, I'll go into work and I have an unproductive day. Right. And I try in that moment, I try to at least, you know, I'll take calls and I'll do what I can to at least, you know, get some paperwork done or whatever right. needs to be done. But... If I just went into work, and there are people who will go into work at whatever job and just dilly-dally, 
all day long, chat on, on Facebook and, and do all this kind of stuff. Those people need to be cut. And, you know, unions, I'm sorry, hold those people in their positions. And I don't like that. So if there's a computer that says that, I know you will, but if there's a computer <laughs> system that says, okay, this person is just wasting company time, that's different. I understand your perspective of they're doing their job, but they're just not very good at it or they need to get better or faster or whatever. They're not meeting quotas. That's, that's tough because, yeah, hey, if I've got a sore arm today, which I do, I'm not going to be packing boxes quite as right, fast exactly. as yesterday. But how do you build that into the app? I, I feel tough. like we could spend it's an really entire tough. show debate. And it is, so it's very polarizing because you can't ever have all the facts. And that's yeah. why I say, kind of tongue-in-cheek, Netflix right. needs to do a documentary. I want to see what's really going on. You know what? Don't worry because there are more stories coming up. Oh, good. And More polarizers. Exactly. Exceptional. So we're, Thanks, we're good. No All problem. Right, let's move on to those. <laughs> Nintendo's hybrid Switch console now stands at 34.74 million units, which, <laughs> surpa <laughs> which surpasses the sales of the incredibly popular N64. Nintendo's latest financial earnings results are now available, giving us a look at the company's hardware and software sales for the past fiscal year. Not only did Nintendo's recent spat of Switch exclusive sell an impressive number of co copies, the Switch console itself has also hit a new sales milestone. During the fiscal year ended March 31st, Nintendo moved 16.95 million Switch consoles. While well, that fell just short of the company's revised plan to sell 17 million units during the fiscal year, it did represent a 12.7 year-on-year increase. Moreover, it brought the system's global sales thus far up to 34.74 million, surpassing the lifetime sales of the Nintendo 64, which stands at 32.93 million. The Switch has been an impressive rebound for Nintendo after the poor performance of the company's previous home console, the Wii U, which sold just 13.56 million units over its lifetime. The Switch, on the other hand, has been selling well since launching back in March 2017, managing to outsell its predecessor in just 10 months. However, it remains to be seen whether or not it'll match the company's best-selling home console, the Wii, which stands at 101.63 million. Wow. I, yeah. I think they can do it. I think I the think Switch can do it. And I think part of the failure of the Wii U is that nobody needed a new console at that time. Right. It's like, why are you bringing out this new thing that's pretty much the same thing, just kind of revamped and wanting me to buy this new thing? Like, it, right. well, my Wii could play um, the, the GameCube and uh, Nintendo Wii. So, right. you know, I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm not upgrading. Exactly. Now we're at a time where yeah, it's time to upgrade. And the Switch is smart. Like the the whole Labo thing. I they don't have, know. Uh, no, I know STEM is a hot thing, but are they, they have, doing it right? They have, well, they have Labo VR now. It's overpriced. Right? So you can that. just pop it in there. You can play Zelda VR. Now it's not going to be perfect by but any means, like, but it's still going to be fun and it's going to get people still interested. Okay. Right? Like it's just going to... Tweak I don't know. Labo's not a selling point for me. I know it's not for you, but it's not about it would, you. It's it about the kids. It is about right? me. Right? It's it's not though. It's, it's not all for me about either. Me, and Sasha. I have a switch and I love it and I probably won't buy a Labo thing, but it's it's, it's cardboard. cardboard for a hundred bucks. Right? <laughs> Give me a break. That no. is a perfect That's idea. That, dumb. that is perfect. No, from a I marketing know it's standpoint, from a <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> There's some genius. evil marketing genius. It is that's like <laughs> absolutely here we are just throwing our cardboard <laughs> to the recycling <laughs> willy nilly and somebody else. All of those Wii U boxes that we've I recycled <laughs> and we've just repainted them to make them look like a piano. What about exactly. that? Yeah, okay. I think come it's on, come absolutely on. Absolutely genius idea. But the Kudos. game console. So here's Here's the scenario. We have a 55-inch uh, TV hanging on the wall downstairs. Yeah. My daughter will be using it b w with the computer. Uh, so just, just a scenario. But one of the boys want to use uh, the Switch. Well, she's on the TV. So what do they do? They pick it up out of the thing, and they connect the controllers, and they go and they play it on the couch. Exactly. Right? And it's like... And then when she's done on the TV, they can take it and plug it in and continue playing their game. And it's yeah. like fantastic. Right. And sometimes Dave and I are sitting on the couch and he's playing and yeah. it's a game where I can, you know, 
also play. So he'll plug just, it into the TV. Well, no, well, oh. yeah, plug it into the TV, and, and yeah, then the two, two controllers. The two can the one controller turns into two controllers, and yep. you just flip them sideways. And That's neat. this is smart, Nintendo. You've done well. I think the portability of it is what makes it so appealing. Sure. I mean, because you can't walk away with your Xbox, you can't walk away with your PlayStation. It, yeah. So the fact that they said, you know what, how can we multifacet this platform Smart, so that it's yeah. on your TV, It's you can bring it in the car, you can take it to the beach, you can sit in a boring meeting and play. Like, they thought of everything. <laughs> Which is good. The computer is going to fire you. <laughs> Which is good because the more you bring it around, the more the chance is you're going to drop it, break it, needs to buy a new one. Hence, selling millions mm. of units. And that's called the Sasha method. That's the Sasha effect. <laughs> that's how she does it, folks. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh. Elon Musk has revealed that his Neuralink startup is close to announcing the first brain-machine interface to connect humans and computers. Uh, what now? Yep. The entrepreneur took to Twitter to tell followers the technology would be coming soon, though he failed to provide details. Neuralink was set up in 2016 with the ambitious goal of developing hardware to enhance the human brain. However, little about how this will work has been made public. The startup's website, which is advertising vacancies for 11 different jobs, describes the futuristic technology as an ultra-high bandwidth connection between the human brain and computers. Mr. Musk has frequently frequently claimed the rapid rise of artificial intelligence poses an existential risk to humanity. Such an interface, he says, is essential if humans are to compete with such technology in the future. Speaking last year on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, Mr. Musk said that Neuralink's technology would allow humans to effectively merge with AI. A paper published in Nature Nanotechnology in 2015 described a concept for this connection, explaining how a flexible circuit could be injected into a living brain. Charles Lieber, who co-authored the study, said, We're trying to blur the distinction between electronic circuits and neural circuits. We have to walk before we can run, but we can we can re think how really, really revolutionize our, um, our ability to interface with the brain. Despite the technology's potential to augment the human brain, experts have warned that the brain-computer interfaces risk being hijacked by rogue artificial intelligence. Ooh. They warn that such a scenario could lead to AI controlling the thoughts, decisions, and emotions of a person using a brain-computer link. Ah, uh, yikes. So Kay. the person could fire someone. <laughs> First of all, I thought he was kidding. I mean, he <laughs> was high. This is awesome. This is a real thing? This is a real thing. And you know what? In the right situation, this is a great thing. <laughs> however, like in a, in a battle against robots. However, like, can you imagine? Okay, because you only use, what, 10% of your brain? I, I don't even know the stats. 40. But you don't, like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't use much. Like, people don't just don't use much of their brain. But if you had one of these little doodad worm guys in like in the borg there, yeah. right like a borg oh yeah what if it could activate different parts of your brain and you're just your awareness could go up what if there are more mm. senses to have it has some really neat potential right and it could for good just, and evil it could it could help to make decisions based on facts not emotions i think ar as an example would be an incredible incredible use for this type of technology now elon's kind of talking about using it to be able to interact with the computer in such a way that because we have trouble like how can we understand what an AI, what an ai is thinking because right. we can't it, it can't be visualized and it's too fast and too right. uh, too messed up for us to conceptualize so if there's an interface that can allow us to understand a little bit right about what the ai is thinking then isn't that different so you may not be able to answer this question because you are not elon musk but if somebody was speaking to me in another language and i had this mm -hmm. could i just understand them sure universal translator it's part of the borg technology Right. I don't see why not. I mean, we right. already have that technology. Um, it's in it's in your smartphone, and you can actually like my phone with the AI chip. It works really, really well, um, and happens almost in real time. And Could, you can get devices that do that. Right. Could this take your vitals in a way that if you were to be suffering from carbon not. monoxide poisoning, it would alert you before you fall asleep and die? Hey, neat. 
So that would take augmentation with sensors. Right. I'm thinking this is a great thing. <laughs> Hybrid cyborgs. Hey, Jeff. I, I'm just Remember when science fiction was fiction? Well, like... Yeah, we again. This is, <laughs> That's all you get from him, folks. Yeah, no. But look, this is yeah. a, this he, is another one of those ones where it could literally be the entire show of debate back and forth. But like, as you were reading the story, and I'm going to try and be really quick about this because I know I need know to be don't, need to be. We're out of time. time. Yeah. But I feel like I remember back when I was in university that there was somebody who had uh, was quadriplegic that had hooked up some sort of a transmitter to their head to run components of their house, opening doors and stuff like that. Oh, neat. I, I mean, that's going back to 20, yeah, 15 years ago. Okay. Um, but from the standpoint of your brain runs off electrical signals. So could you, in theory, with this, have somebody hack into the computer interface, reverse the electrical signals to now send signals to your brain to mimic things like you now think you see things that you're not actually seeing your body reacts differently. sure like, AR, man. you could be hacked hacked mm -hmm. what a great to defense. have this kind of interface and I, I i don't know if we covered it on the show or if it's something i read but recently within the last like three months i read about people who had their their two different people who had their brains hooked up mm. uh to like 16 different electrodes that read electrical impulses within the brain and as one person thought of a number the the number popped into the other person's head cool so i mean just with that kind of back and forth electrical signal to throw this kind of interface mm -hmm. in it's like there's a bad news and that has some scary implications do yeah. you remember do you remember the black mirror episode where yes. the, the soldiers yeah. were seeing like creatures right and so they were like that we need to one. kill all of those creatures yeah right so because that's they're yeah. and really they were just like they were just people. Right. That's when it But they were wrong. the enemy in war. Yeah. They were genetically flawed. That's what <laughs> yeah. the higher ups said. Yes, yeah. Exactly. So using so, AR, they were able to trick the soldiers into thinking that this was the, like, yeah, absolutely unhuman yeah. creatures that they had to kill because they're going to take over. Right. So it could go really, really bad. It really could. But it could also be amazing. It this could is something be that requires great. so much regulatory oversight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's yeah. And that's that tough. Goes. That's tough. <laughs> uh, let's jump over to CoinGecko and see what the crypto market looks like as of 1800 hours Eastern time on Wednesday. What is today? The fir first? first? Wow. First of the May. first May. of May 2019. Uh, okay. Bitcoin. Everything's down a little bit, but Bitcoin is down 95.46 US. It's down at $5,000. $339.23. Litecoin's at $72.27 uh, US dollar. Ethereum at $158.25. Monero at $63.77. Stellate, the little guy, 1.6 ten thousandths of a cent. And Turtlecoin hanging in at 1.17 ten thousandths of a cent. Remember, the cryptocurrency market never closes and is always volatile. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Jeff Weston. Stick around. We're going to take a really quick break. When we come back, I'm going to be showing you how to fix the interface of the GNU image manipulation program should it go all wonky on you. Stick around. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. Welcome back, everybody. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie. I'm Sasha. And I'm Jeff. 
nice to have you here. We're just about out of time, but before we wrap up for the night, I wanted to take a look at the GNU image manipulation program. Now, I am actually using this on a Raspberry Pi microcomputer on our KKSB 13-inch touchscreen. And so this is what it looks like on my screen, and I'm actually controlling that with my touch screen as well. I've got a keyboard here, which I'll just kind of have handy just in case I need it. But sometimes what can happen with the GNU image manipulation program, keep in mind this is a free kind of Photoshop alternative, uh, but you can get a little bit confused in that, hey, these windows are kind of, you know, all over the place. See this? So if I want to exit the program, how do you think I do that? Well, typically, you know, we're used to pressing the X. So if I, let's grab this window over here, and I know you can't see my mouse cursor, so I'm just going to show you which window I am touching. I'm going to click on the X there, thinking that I'm going to close the GNU image manipulation program. Well, now it's still up, but mm. I have no tools. I can't, I can't find my way to... Okay, how do I get things back up and, you know, so I can click around and, oh, no, what have I done? Okay, let's exit. I'm going to click on the X over here. I'm trying. Me and my sausage fingers. Uh -oh. Almost there. Oh, there. there you go. Okay, oh, now I've just got this picture. And so now what do I do? And hit this happens. <laughs> yeah, hit the X. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, so now I've, gotten, I've lost my picture. Now let's hit the X, or I'll hit Alt F4 on my keyboard, I guess. I could do. There we go. Okay, so now I'm, I'm good to go. So let's, let's reopen the GIMP. So now I've you know, come back to it the next day, and let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start working on some photos here. Welcome to the GNU Image Manipulation Program 2.10, oh. and uh-oh. Where's your stuff? Okay, I need to add text to this photo. Uh, all right. How do I do that, Jeff? Uh, Filters? Uh, no. Uh, image? No. So you see kind of what I'm saying, right? You can get, because of the way that the interface is, if you're not familiar with it, it can get really, really confusing. So yes. I'm going to show you a really, really fast way to redeem it. Okay. But then also a way to prevent this from happening again in the future. So I'm going to hit Edit and then Preferences. In Preferences, there is one called Window Management. You see that? It's highlighted black now. Mm -hmm. And there's a button at the bottom of it that says Reset Saved Window Positions to Default Values. I'm going to click that, and it says your window setup will be reset to default values the next time you start GIMP. So I'm going to say OK. Sounds good. OK. And then I'm going to close the GIMP again. And now let's reopen the GNU Image Manipulation Program. I'm using a flat pack here. So, you can install this on Windows, Mac, Linux. It's absolutely free. And now, okay, so now this has actually put me in single window mode. Now, I want to show you that, though, because you may not get that automatically. So, now you see all of my tools are back. So, I've got my, you know, all of the editing tools. I've got my text editor. There you go. So, I can change my font and all that kind of stuff, right? I've got it back. Now, so that's how I can quickly recover after I've accidentally closed all those, right. those tools, right? Really, really fast way to fix it. But then, again, now we saw really briefly there what's called single window mode. So now what I want to do is I want to actually click Windows and then see at the bottom there? Yeah. Single window mode. It may or may not be the default on your system. But by doing that now, when I maximize that window, it's all part of the interface. So these buttons and everything are now integrated into the interface. So you're not going to accidentally close them. There's no X there anymore. So now if I hit the X, it actually closes GIMP. And I have to reopen it again. Let's reopen it and see what it looks like now. Now remember, I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 3, not a B+, just a 3B, and it's running pretty good. Yeah. There we go. So let's, uh, let's open an image. And now it's actually opening it within the same window. So I'm not going to have that problem anymore where I'm losing 
things. And now if I click on X here, I can actually close the image. But there you go. So a real quick fix for the GNU image manipulation program. Grab it at GIMP.org. And do check out single window mode if, uh, if you're fairly new to the interface. Why would you want it in separate windows? Mm -hmm. Any guesses? No. <laughs> She's like, that's stupid. In case you use dual screens. Oh, for I the use, win. I use triple screens, Jeff. Oh, I okay. have so my I have a, a monitor right in front of me that is turned vertical, so it's actually like this. Yep. In front of me, then on either side I have my tools. That makes sense. Wow. And I can drag things from screen to screen, and I can do all the editing that way. So That's in that smart. way, it works very very well, and I can actually maximize each window to each screen, and it's fantastic. But I if you're using one screen, yeah, oh, that. it's fantastic. That's cool. But as you're s just learning, or you're using just one screen, switch it to single window mode. It's going to save you a lot oh, of grief. Geez. Yeah. Uh, that's all the time that we have for this week, folks. It's been really nice having you here. Don't forget, we are on Twitter. You can follow us at Category5TV. Uh, you can also follow me personally at Robbie Ferguson. I will follow you back, and uh, I appreciate the follow. Also, if you want, you can watch us on YouTube. I encourage you to subscribe. We have mm -hmm. a special channel as well. You can search for us, Category 5, uh, on YouTube, and you'll find us. But you can also look for uh, Linux Tech Show. And yes. you can get there through linuxtechshow.com, which will take you to YouTube. And that's really cool because we take the one-hour show, we edit it down to little 10, 20-minute segments. So you can just watch the kind of the meat of the episode. Um, also, we're available on Roku, Kodi, Plex, all kinds of channels. I mean, on your, on your Roku, channel store you'll find category 5 tv all of our shows are there uh, but you can also add us to your other platforms by going to our github at cat5 uh, it's github.com slash cat5 tv now of course our main website brings everything together including rss feeds click on subscribe you'll find everything you need there and that is category 5.tv for this week that's all the time so we'll see you next week take care everybody bye, bye.